Good morning, everybody. This is Mr. Conrad, along with Mr. Spencer. And today we're going to talk about creating graphs, Mr. Spencer, because there's a lot of people who, when we're working on it, they get really confused about things. So I'm what, always, oh, I totally interrupted you. Yeah, but, I'm used I mean, to it. Yeah. So, but a lot of people get really confused. So let's try and eliminate some of the confusion. Okay, sounds good. But also, when people are thinking of graphs, they're also probably thinking along the lines of Dwight here. Jim is in charge of Stanley only in sales related matters. Hence the green line, green for money, sales, get it? Uh -huh. There is this yellow zigzag that does give Ryan the authority to discipline Stanley. Great. However, in so doing, it zigs past your name, hence zagging you and making you appear weak. That's the yellow color, yellow for cowardly. Let's okay, so a lot of, I mean, that's a classic Office classic office. Classic office moment. However, but there's a lot of people who think of like making a graph and that's what they think of. Yeah. They just think it's like way too complicated. So we're going to try and make things a little bit easier for you. So guys, so you're going to want to get some notes out and then write this stuff down. So how to create a graph. So the first thing is tails and Mr. Spencer is going to talk about that. You know, so when you told me about this, I'm like, wow, this does a really good job of, of kind of making it easy to, to remember. All right. Even I can remember this. So when we think about the T, we're talking about the title. Very simple, right, very so we straightforward. Got, we gotta make sure that we've got a title across the top because we wanna know what the heck this is talking about. Yes. Then we also wanna make sure that we have our axes uh, labeled so that like what, the- what, what, What's up with this dry mix? Oh, just wait. Just okay, okay, wait. okay. We got some, good, this is another way to, to remember stuff. All right, I love it. And we wanna make sure we have our intervals spaced okay. out evenly. Yep. We want to make sure that we label things so that way we know once again what we're talking about okay. and then have it to scale. Very good. That is a very easy way to make sure you have everything on your graph versus trying to remember it. Like, yeah. okay, do I have this? Do I have this? Right. You can just write tails down. You could put like a check mark next to each one after mm -hmm. you do each one. Good that idea. makes life easy for you. Good. All right. So this dry mix that Mr. Oh. Spencer was talking about, here we go. The first one is D for the dependent variable. And then you have, which is the responding variable. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what you're measuring again. That always goes on the y-axis. Okay. So it's either the, so some we call it dependent. Some people call it responding. Oh, okay. They're the same thing. Same thing. Is that, is that a synonym? We do science, man. Okay. So. <laughs> But it's on the y-axis. It's on the y-axis. That's all that really matters, guys. Okay, and then the second part is the manipulated variable, or some people refer to it as the independent variable, and that goes on your x-axis. So again, yep. y-axis, vertical, x-axis is horizontal for us to remember. All right. So we have this data that we had. We had a question in class was, how does the length of a string affect the number of times a pendulum will swing back and forth in 10 seconds? So Mr. Spencer and I actually performed we this. Did that. We, yeah, we did this. Yeah. And we did it with um, some string and some paper clips. So paper clip number one was the longest length. No, no, other way around. Other way around. Other that was around. the shortest length. My bad. <laughs> uh, paper clip number two was like the middle. And then number three was obviously the longest one. And we just counted how many times it swung back and forth in 10 seconds. 10 and seconds. that is our data. And we have a video of us showing you how to do that. Wonderful video. So now we're actually going to get to making the graph. So you have your X and Y axes, so you can draw those out. So now it's just a matter of simply going through. And remembering tails. Yep. Okay, so we want to make sure that we have our title. Okay, does the length of string affect how many times a pendulum swings in 10 seconds? Okay, does it always have to be that lengthy? No, no. I mean, it, it needs to be descriptive. One way that I've seen, like if you go, if you're taking college level science, they want to have like dependent variable versus independent, independent okay. variable. Okay, but we want to just make sure that we know, when somebody looks at the graph, they, they know, know what, what they're it's talking, talking about. about. Yeah, because otherwise it's like, okay, am I talking about hamsters or gerbils? And we don't know. Because yeah. that happens sometimes. It does happen. Like, how many times does a gerbil go around in a circle? I don't know. <laughs> so the next thing we want to do is we label our axes. So we mm -hmm. already have our axes labeled X and Y. And we also kind of got into our I, which is our interval. So we have everything nicely spaced. Mm -hmm. Now, do we always have to have that many interval tick marks on our graph? I think it depends. It does. It does it depend on the information that we're dealing yeah. with. Okay. Because some people go crazy with the tick marks when they don't need to. Yes. And some people don't use enough tick marks when they need to. So you gotta, you gotta find the right amount so that it's easy to read and tell what the... And I think as we go on, you'll see that I didn't need quite as many 
tick marks, but I got to get a little carried away. That's It happens. It, it, happens. it does happen with me. Next part is L for label. So we're going to label our axes. Mm -hmm. So we have the number of paper clips. That is our dependent or independent variable, excuse me. So I noticed something here that you had... I'm, I'm pointing at the screen like everybody else can see that. He's but pointing at everybody. But looking at the x-axis, it's not just paper clips. It's the number, number of, of paper, paper clips. clips. So you have what the or you have the independent variable that's down there, but mm -hmm. you also have the units that it's being measured with, which I think is really important. The, and if we didn't have paper clips, guys, we would actually measure the length of the strings, and we just put length of yep. uh, pendulum arm is what mm -hmm. we would put on the bottom and then we would our numbers would just be the actual distance Nine like one meters yeah. or half a half a meter and so on then we have obviously the number of swings so it's not just swings it's the number of right. swings so we're really really specific there and then the last thing is our scale so there is our scale now notice on the x-axis my scale is kind of spread out so I kind of want to make my graph it, cover as much area as I can. I don't want to smush it all down into like the very first three spots on there. So I want to spread things out as much as I can. So realistically in that X axis, I could have just had four tick marks. Mm -hmm. And the reason I put a fourth one is we're going to try and do something with that here in a yeah. second. And I was looking at the Y axis, like you've got it numbered one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 10. Oh, uh, yep. And that's good. That is, you can see that you could also maybe do like just Every two. Oh, just uh, do two, yeah, four, like, six, eight, yeah. ten. That's how you count by twos, right? I think so. Okay. I think so. So Nine. Not, no, don't, 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 don't do that to them. They might be confused. <laughs> All right. So then the next thing is to obviously then just go through and plot your points right there. So that's a nice, easy graph that we could do. Now, the reason I put four on there is, okay, using our information, could you use oh, that to predict yeah. if we were to add a fourth paper clip? how many swings would you get in 10 seconds? Well, if that looks like a pretty linear line there, so I mean, if you were to follow that line down, you could easily predict how many there would be in four, a fourth paperclip added. So this is actually pretty important stuff. It helps you out, huh? Yeah. A lot of people use these types of graphs to predict things, like predict yeah. sales and stuff like that, and to make uh, estimated guesses when we're dealing with science as well. All right. I think we made him dangerous. That could be scary. That's You guys got this. You can do it. Let us know if you need any help.